Good day, beautiful people. Greet you in a wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We continue our Bible study, intercession, intercessory prayer, pray, praying prophetically, understanding what a prophetic prayer means and what does it mean to intercede for someone. And um, yesterday we talked about chapter um, 36 and 37. Um, for those who didn't catch it on my Facebook, just have a look on YouTube as well. Today I want to continue on chapter 38. And let's say pray in line with God's desire and the will of God. And we say we this theme for this year is the will of God, God's sovereign purpose and um, for some people we pray we intercede for health for um, deliverance we pray for breakthrough we pray for um, whatever point we pray for but praying in line with God's desire um, if you read chapter 38 a typical thing that we see here and that we know is from verse 3 on and it's saying and God said and said remember Oh, well, Isaiah, Ezekiel, sorry. Ezekiel said, Remember now, O Lord, and I beseech you how I have walked before you in faithfulness and in truth with a whole heart, and have done what is good in your sight. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. Then came the word of the Lord to Isaiah, saying, Go and say to Hezekiah, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David, your father, I have heard your prayer. I have seen your tears, and behold, I will add to your life fifteen years, and I will deliver you and the city out of the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will f defend this city. And you can read the rest of the chapter. And that's, and that's a typical verse, and that's a typical passage that we use to um, comfort someone. So praying in line with God's desire in this is the confidence, the assurance, the privilege of boldness which we have in Him. We are sure that if we ask anything according to His will, we know that God will listen to and hear us. We can read that in 1 John 5 verse 14. And a lot of people are going through situations at this point. A lot of people are struggling with health, with with finances, with situations, with um, spiritual warfare. And sometimes people pray, Father, let your will be done, without realizing the import of this statement. It, is, it isn't one to be made casually. I want to stress this. Don't make this casually. You don't just say, Thy will be done. You have to know what the will is. And when Jesus prayed and said the same words, He knew exactly what the Father's will was, and he mentioned it. And there's a difference between a will and a desire. And I talked about that last year as well. The fact that something is God's will at a particular point in time doesn't mean it may be his desire. So I'll give you an example from the Bible. So here again, Isaiah 38, the Bible tells a story about King Hezekiah who was sick. And the prophet Isaiah was sent to him by God to tell him to set his house in order because he was going to die. To set your house in order. That is a command from God. At that point, God stated his clear will for King Hezekiah's life to set your house in order. So after receiving this message from the prophet, Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to God, weeping. And the Bible tells us, if we, if we read further, Then came the word of the Lord to Isaiah, saying, Go and say to Hezekiah, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears, and behold, I will add unto thy days fifteen years. Praise God for this. So when Hezekiah was told he was going to die, if he had replied, Thy will be done, O Lord, he would have died. But he knew that wasn't God's desire for him. He knew God created him for his praise. And we talked about praising God, honoring God. 
So in his prayer, he said to the Lord, the dead cannot celebrate you. Only the living can praise you as I do this day. Isaiah 38 verse um, 18 to 19. Let's read that again. And the dead cannot celebrate you. Only the living can praise you as I do this day. So when you're praying about the will of God on a matter, find out how consistent that thing is with his character. Only then will you know how best to pray about it. So for instance, in the Old Testament, God led the children of Israel in several battles and fought wars on their behalf. Yet the Bible tells us he's God of peace. He's more known as the God of peace than any other name in the Bible. And this shows his desire. What he really wants is peace and not war. And this kind of understanding will help you pray always in line with his desire as revealed in his word. So we pray and we say, Dear Father, I am inspired by the truth of your word, your love and your eternal kindness, with, which communicates your desire for us to prosper and be in health, even as our souls prosper. And even now, I am strengthened in my confidence to pray, knowing that it's your delight to hear and answer my prayers. My joy is full today, confident of your love and power at work in me. In Jesus' name, we pray. And I would just want to touch base back quickly on what is prophetic intercession and revolutionary prayer. And for those who understand, who don't understand, this is a topic we talk about, we discuss, and we work on studying the book Isaiah. So, while the term is not found anywhere in the passages of Scripture, prophetic intercession is powerful because it allows you to learn in or to lean into the heart of God and then pray His heart back to Him in accordance with His will. So, finding words for scripture, scriptural principles is sometimes really difficult. So, as far as I know, for example, airplanes are not in the Bible. School buses and bicycles not mentioned either. The book of Leviticus does not say anything pro or con about contact lenses or television. And the term Trinity is not found anywhere in the Bible. Mm, ooh, I'm going to get, get it. So where are you aware of? So where were you aware of that? God in three persons blessed Trinity. Uh, it's one of the greatest uh, church hymns. It's one, It's some of our recited church history creeds as well. It has to be used in a Bible somewhere, right? No, it isn't. Where does it really mention the Trinity really clearly? So now some of you just said, yeah, I knew it. I knew it all the time. Does that mean that Sunday school is unscriptural? No, there are just some things that are not included in the Bible in so many words, although the applicable principles are. Remember that, the applicable principles. That is the case with most of what I call the seven models of prophetic, the seven models of prophetic communication. So in fact, I devoted an entire chapter to this non-biblical phrase in a book or in a work that I done, The Prophet. And we can read that back. You can find that back if you Google well. So, though the principles of these seven diverse prophetic communication tools have been drawn 100% from the Bible, you will not technically find these words listed out anywhere in any of the gifts um, lists in the pages of Scripture. So, seven diverse models of prophetic communication. Um, you may be asking, what are these seven modes of prophetic communication or models, modes? So, as I see it, um, they fall into the following categories. One, the prophetic oracle, the statesman. Secondly, prophetic exhortation, the encouragement. Prophetic prayer, that is intercession. The prophetic song, musician, singer, personal prophecy individual or corporate, the prophetic vision, so the seer realm, and the prophetic action, dramatically acting out a word or manifestation. 
So now let's get a glance at number five, personal prophecy, individual or corporate. So the power of prophetic intercession. Um, actually, number three. So prophetic intercession is a revelatory prayer. Revelatory prayer is one of the most common expressions of the prophetic spirit and is often referred to as prophetic intercession. So these are God-directed prayers, not preaching or exhortation. So inspired by God and directed back to Him, they make it possible for you to pray effectively and accordingly to God's will. Practice. This is the key word. Practice. Listen. Listen, 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 see, and shh. You really need to shh if you want to hear the word of God. You really need to. So on your own, you cannot come up with prayers that, that hit the mark so accurately. Since these prayers are inspired by the Spirit of God, they express the desire of his heart back to him. And often they express much more than you could have understood in the natural or on your own about a given matter. Prophetic prayers are recorded throughout the Bible, like we know, and Paul wove some into his epistles. Um, for example, this one, 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 23 to 24. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely. And this is a prayer. And may your spirit and soul and body be preserved completely without blame at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he who calls you and he also will bring it to pass. So in the New Testament, other prophetic prayers, both long and brief, include, for example, Luke 1, verse 67 to 79, Ephesians 3, 16 to 19, Philippians 1, verse 9 to 11, Colossians 1, verse 9 to 12, Romans 15, uh, 5 to 7, and we can go so on. So as with any prophetic or prayerful expression, it is not elegance that is important, but rather the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. So after all, he does not always use words. He is the one who sometimes prays. And we read that in Romans 8, 26, worth groanings deep for words. We don't always know the words. We don't always know what to pray and how to pray. So revolutionary prayer can be incredibly powerful and effective. And it takes the believer outside the realm of information only and into a dimension of intercession with which they might be less familiar. So the Holy Spirit leads you by the spirit of wisdom and revelation to pray for people, events and at times even crisis circumstances in a manner that only he can guide and direct. So prophetic prayer has been used by God's generals in the past. And so we can, if you want to join me, let's go into God's heart so that we can pray his desires back to him and see his kingdom come and his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. May your day be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen.